Welcome to the Libido Lounge, where we focus on all things love, lust, and libido. We believe that fabulous sex is important to health as exercise and good food. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode on the Libido Lounge. I'm your host, libido expert, Dr. Diane, and I'm so excited to have another expert in the field with me, Dr. Jenny Tolfankian, another naturopathic doctor and stress, libido, hormones, and more experts. We're going to talk about so much good stuff today, you guys. We're going to talk about things that are going to turn your libido on, turn your libido off. We're going to talk about how to find those things, the power of the mind, actionable steps, and more. So welcome, 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 Dr. Jenny. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here and to talk with all of you beautiful people. So what makes you so excited about this topic? Like, tell me what kind of turned you on personally about the the topic we're talking about today. I work with people who are really chronically ill like you do, and I've been working in the field of chronic fatigue, and I just see so many women feeling like they're too exhausted to be able to enjoy having sex anymore. And that can be a great marker to mark where your energy is, and it's something that we talk about in clinic. But I really find that sometimes it just gets so complicated in women's mind and they start really losing their sense of power and their sense of who they are in the world when they disconnect from their passion and from their libido. So I love to see women begin to reconnect with that beautiful passion so that they can feel the power in their own body again. I love this so much. And let's jump right into that. So Mm -hmm. When we're talking about things that are unique to the individual, right? So I think we can read online so many times like, ooh, this aphrodisiac food or this aphrodisiac this. And it's like, oh, oysters are everywhere, right? Because oysters have zinc. And it's like, oh, this aphrodisiac (laughs) this, right? But I know a lot of people are like, you put an oyster in their mouth and that's going to slay their libido as we're talking about (laughs) today. Because it's like a lot of people like them and a lot of people don't. They're slimy, they're gross. And so- When we're talking about the uniqueness of the individual, right, Mm -hmm. how do we begin to have this conversation around libido slayers versus Mm -hmm. libido inducers? Yeah. So I think that in this consumerist culture, we tend to want to grab a lot of things that are outside of us to make us feel better. We're really conditioned that we need this new car. We need this new outfit. We need this new body before we can feel sexy and powerful inside ourselves. The truth is that the real power for how we feel comes from inside of us. And so what is it that's going on in your mind that is that that inducing that libido in you versus what is that thing that's going in your mind that is that libido slayer. Like you and I know that stress is a huge libido slayer. I mean, you want to talk about, you know, you're sitting there with your partner and you're talking about the bills and what happens (laughs) to your libido, you know, it tanks. And unfortunately you're doing that right before you have that date (laughs) and you know, it's not going to go well, right? You know, what can you do to catch yourself in that mental process so that you can flip the switch and know what it is that triggers in your body that kills your libido and what it is that makes you feel better in your own cells so you can feel sexy again. Yeah, it's I'm I'm thinking about even in that, like to take that example even further, right? Like, okay, so there's a few different things, say from like that, say slayer standpoint in this example, if somebody has a specific thing like a bill mm-hmm. that say triggers this whole libido to fall. So in my mind, there's a few different ways we can handle that, right? We can handle it by, say, pretending that bill's a check, right? Right. And psychologically convincing ourselves it's a check. But there's other ways we can handle, you know, something like that too. So let's let's say, how do people begin to understand what their unique things are as far as what's going to turn down their libido, like this bill example, Mm -hmm. and then in the things that we can't avoid, like we're going to sometimes get bills part of human existence, right? So in the things that we can't avoid, and we know that these are, there are libido slayers, how can we work with this, these things better to still stay connected to our sensual body and to our libido? I think each one of you who's listening right now has your own individual list of what's a libido slayer. And I would invite you either right now or after you listen to this podcast, to just grab a piece of paper and a pen and start thinking about it. And you'll start coming up with more and more over the next few weeks of noticing when your libido just dives. Like I know for myself that talking about 
money. Sometimes talking about environmental destruction just is a real sex killer for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kids, the kids waking up in the middle of the night, you know, with, with being sick, that kind of kills the libido as well. Yes. You know, there's certain <laughs> things that I know that there's some inside my control and outside my control. Knowing, beginning to map out what yours are is the first step to feeling empowered. Now, I, I like the idea of flipping that bill to a check, but I also have to say, I'm kind of I don't think just brushing over everything and making everything look shiny and pink and pretty is the way to go. There's a certain place where we have to acknowledge when things are hard and, and honor that struggle right there in that moment and honor it, but it only needs to be honored for a short period of time before we can then use that energy of that grief or upset or fear or whatever and flip it into something and use that energy to start feeling positive again. And I'd say, as well as having that list of what are libido slayers, also create the list of what are your libido inducers. And again, what are yours? Like each one, you, you know, you who's listening, what are your libido inducers? What turns you on? It's gonna be different for everyone. I, you know, myself, you know, I love to be out, when I feel connected to my inner self and I feel connected to my body, then I feel much better. And I, and my libido goes up, you know, if I can dance, if I can be in water, all those things. How about you? What do you, what are yours? Oh, well, first is just a comment on what you just said. Cause I think it's so important. This, this concept of like, on like acknowledging those hard times. Right. Because I think like, so it's like one of the reasons why I don't like, I shouldn't say I don't like, but I think affirmations have their limitations. Right. Because in this yes. example, right. We could right. say like, right. like, oh, um, I am, I'm abundant. I'm abundant. I'm abundant as we're staring at this like $5,000 bill. Right. And we can right. say, I'm sexy. I am sexy. After, I am sexy after we've eaten too much at dinner and we feel so bloated and right. we right. just want to get into our pajamas. Right? right. And so there's that element of just feeling, I think I just wanted to name that. Cause I think it's so important of like allowing ourselves to feel the, the things, the hard things instead of yeah, pushing right. them away. But exactly. then like, like you're suggesting, like being able to flip out of that right. more and more quickly with a better transition while still always acknowledging that challenge, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a lot of patterning that goes on in the unconscious brain that we talk about when your summit is coming out, right? We go into yes. that and how much that subconscious mind can impact what you're thinking. And if you're having a negative tape going in your head about, oh, I'm so fat or I'm so broke or I'm so, you know, nobody likes me or I'm not good enough. If you have those tapes going consciously or unconsciously, consciously that's a libido slayer i'm telling you right now that's a libido slayer yes. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much you say those affirmations i'm sexy i'm sexy that's five percent of your brain the 95 percent is going i feel really fat you know that's not going to work <laughs> you know right. you need to you need to you need to marry your conscious and unconscious mind to really have the power to impact change in your body and in your in your in your field yeah. And I think the exercise you're describing is so powerful, right? Because right. like having a few weeks where you're kind of taking notes, like not judging, yeah. like what's right. coming through the slayers, the inducers, but just becoming more aware because sometimes we don't even realize like, oh my gosh, like when I've done exercises like this, or I'm like, oh, I feel bloated. I feel bloated. Like it's like when I was going through various digestive problems, it was crazy how many times in a day I would say in my mind, like, I feel bloated. I feel fat. Right. Right. And it's like, I had no idea how right. much that was going through my mind until right. I wrote it down. I was like, well, that was like 75 times today. Holy yeah. cow. Right. Right. And so that, you know, for like a slayer, that's a big one for me is how I feel in my body. Like if I don't keep up with exercise and keep up with like the day-to-day, -day, right. you know, day-to-day self-care routine, mm -hmm. It can slide for, you know, for a little while, but not very long before yeah. I just don't feel as tone and I just don't feel as connected to my body and my libido just goes way down with right. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're also bringing up another good point is that when we stay committed to ourselves in terms of whatever our routine is, whatever your, if your self-care routine is doing facials or your self-care routine is doing the hit workout or your self your routine is doing your meditation, whatever your commitment to yourself is, or maybe it's, you know, just being with your kids, whatever that is, when you stay committed to that routine, it builds self-esteem. It, you know, you are, you are saying, yes, I matter. I matter. And when we matter, we feel better inside of our bodies. And then we feel ready to connect with somebody else on the most vulnerable, intimate level. 
Yeah, exactly. And I think what you're bringing up there too is like when we are in that state more of like filled up that state of readiness, that state of vulnerability, there's also that safety. Like usually if we're in that state, there's also a sense of like, huh, we feel safe in ourselves. We feel safe in our connections and, or, or at least resourced enough where it's like, if we don't feel say emotionally safe with our partner, then we're resourced enough internally to address maybe that libido slayer. Cause I thought that's where another thing I see is like a huge libido slayer is that feeling of unsafety, right? Like, right. Like, so for, do you see like with people you work with, do you see any sort of like emotions that are commonly libido slayers if they're not like addressed and brought to the surface and are just kind of like there and the, um, you know, kind of on the subconscious mind playing out that way? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think when people are really chronically ill, which most of my patients are when they first come to see me with chronic fatigue, long COVID, that kind of thing, there's already this the limbic brain has already been triggered into the sense of I'm not safe. Like the messages have already come up from the cells to the brain that I'm not safe. And pretty much everything kind of feels like an attack on the nervous system. And you don't even know if you have energy to get through your day. So there's this real sense of lack of control. Like I don't have power over my body and the sense of, of unconscious fear. And there can also be the anxiety. All of those things are massive libido slayers, as you know, <laughs> you know, consciously and yes. unconsciously, right? <laughs> you know, um, there is an aerobic aspect to some types of sex. <laughs> you <Yes. know? laughs> and the body is just going, no, I don't have the energy for that. So there's a lot of those pieces. And I think that um, when we're working with the, and when we're doing subconscious work, when I'm doing some conscious work with my patients, I'd say that there are some really core things that often come up around self-worth and around, around uh, really around that safety and self-love and self-worth. And those are the biggest things that we can work on to shift. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And that's, that brings up like another reason why I just love this topic of libido so much because so many things it's like libido is almost, I feel like when it's, it's almost like a flag when our libido is almost like a flag, right. Of something else, you know, some other imbalance in our life, in our relationships, in ourselves. Right. And so that sign it's like, you know, I had a patient this past week that we were working with for Lyme disease and that sort of thing. Mm And the moment we, we, I sent her for a nutrient, um, NAD IV. And that moment after the NAD, she's like, She's like, I'm horny for the first time in years, right? <laughs> because she had energy, right? So it was like so, so amazing. We get those fundamental root causes fixed. What right. back on? Right. Yeah, I totally agree. For me, it's it's a flag. And it's I think where you and I are really um, you know, simpatico with this is that we've been working with these chronically ill patients for decades, and we've both always checked in with people's libido because we know it's such an important marker especially if it's changed for them and, you know, did it get worse? And also we're marking it as it gets better. And you're right. And the other thing I love about this libido issue is that it's not just the physical body. It's also the emotional and the energetic body. It, like it, it interweaves all three layers. Yes. And for us who work on all those layers, it's, it's part of the detective work to figure out, okay, which layers are being impacted so that the libido isn't where we want it to be. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. All of that. And yeah. Yeah. I want to um, make sure that we talk a tiny bit more about the inducers and also mention yeah. to everybody this really cool inducer, libido inducer recipe guide you're giving out to everybody. And we'll yeah. have information on how to find that you guys in the show notes from this episode. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about that and talk, we can talk a little bit bigger about it. anything else you want to say about like the inducers, the things that rev the libido up. Yeah. Well, I think that when we're talking about inducers, again, for me, sure, there's the oysters and there's the creams and there's the essential oils and all that stuff. I mean, and literally your external environment does have an impact. I mean, you're sitting on those, that lovely fur chair right now. I mean, isn't that just a little bit sensual, right? You know, like certain fabrics <laughs> I <am> better on, <laughs> on my skin than others, right? I mean, those things are all important, but truly it is about what is going inside of you. So I find the biggest inducer is when you can actually begin to shift your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind into knowing that you are truly beautiful, no matter what your, no matter what is going on with your body right now, no matter what form it came into in this lifetime, no matter what it is, you are truly beautiful. You are truly worthy of, of loving and being loved. And that you just know that that is true in all of your cells. And I find the most powerful way to do this work is 
like what we talked about mapping out, like, what are your triggers? What, what brings you down? What brings you up and mapping that out and in practicing, like catching yourself, like, Oh, I'm having that negative thought and I'm not feeling so good anymore. How can I switch this into something better? And, and, um, yeah, for those who are interested in taking this a little bit deeper, I'm actually doing this thing for your audience, which I've never done before. <laughs> I may never do again, <laughs> which is I'm, I have a short little program that shows people how to get into their unconscious mind and actually begin to switch things, do quick reframes as well as deeper work. And I, I show you four different methods that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis to begin to really rewire your brain. So if that piques your interest, if that interests you, then check out the, the links below. Cause I'm going to give you like the best discount I've ever given anybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I really hope you guys will check that out because I think that's going to help you guys assimilate all of this information and more like way deeper. So this is just the intro. And this is also just a prequel to more work that Dr. Jenny and I have done together. So Coming up is our amazing sexual dysfunction summit. Dr. Jenny is one of my amazing speakers on this summit. So we're going to have the best conversation and you definitely will want to show up to that because you'll be able to get so much more than we even were able to cover today. And so links on how to sign up for that summit, you can register for free, you can buy it and have it for life. Either way, there's information on that in the show notes below. And you're just going to get so many more resources. And all, it's also going to help you get out of these vicious cycles. Like, you know, something you just said, Dr. Jenny, that I really appreciate is this whole thing around self-worth, right? Because we see research where having sex improves self-worth, but then we don't have self-worth, then we don't typically want to have sex. So right. it's like we get in this like hamster wheel of how to get out of it. And right. the conversations that we're having here, the conversations that we're having more with you at the summit, that's going to go a lot more into some of these vicious cycles and how we begin to unravel them. So that's what I have for you guys today. Do you have any final action steps? I want to make sure people know how to get a hold of you. That'll again be in the show notes, but anything else you want to leave us with today? I just want you to know that the power to shift your health is inside of you. It just is. And there are different ways to tap into that. And I, it, I invite you to start exploring different ways so that you can feel fully empowered and embodied in this beautiful being that you are at this time. And um, yeah, that's what I have to say. Great concluding words. I love it so much. I'm so grateful for you and all the collaboration and Everybody, that's a wrap. That's another episode of the Libido Lounge. Thanks for hanging out with us in the lounge. And remember to always stay classy, sexy, and a little badassy. Thank you for listening to the Libido Lounge. Please don't keep me a secret. Please share this with your friends. You can find me on YouTube, on Instagram, as well as how to work with me at mylibidodoc.com. 